Hey guys, welcome back to another Minecraft video. So it's been a couple days since the last one. <laughs> yeah. Um, what I intended to do is I intended to gather some resources and do a couple of things before I started the next video, and I just ended up going way overboard. I got really carried away. And I'll show you what exactly has changed since the last video. Um, first of all, uh, we're in the hub. You guys recognize the hub. Uh, first of all, the smallest change is I uh, created this little storage room. Since this hallway leading up to the Greenhouse of Harmony is so long, I've decided to begin building rooms uh, down the hallway as I need them. The first of which is this storage room, little painting here. And uh, the storage room contains... I've been doing most of my crafting here now because uh, this is just the best, pl best place for me to come. Um, in this first chest, we've got a uh, few axes, some stone swords, steel picks, and of course my gold sword. This second chest up here on the top left is filled with stone pickaxes and stone shovels. These things I use a whole, whole lot of, so I've made a ton of them. Uh, down in the lower right, we've got all of my crafting materials and a few other miscellaneous items like coal and these uh, stone steps. And in the top chest, top right, we've got a full suit of brand new leather armor. Uh, I'm not wearing armor because whenever you're out doing mundane things, like uh, gathering resources, you, sometimes you'll like accidentally take a slight fall or something, a little little longer drop than you had intended to, and you'll take like half a heart's worth of damage. Well, you don't want to you don't want to reduce the durability of your armor on something like that. So whenever I'm wandering around doing mundane things, I don't really wear armor, and I, I would suggest you take that into account as well. Uh, let me show you the next biggest change. Actually, the second biggest change. This is the second biggest thing that I've done. I'll show you the actual biggest thing in just a just a moment. But yeah, the uh, second biggest thing that I've done, you'll notice uh, this little area here is is cleared out, and there is a empty room here. Um, not sure what I'm going to do with this yet, but this is actually this room isn't here for no reason. It's actually it, it serves. Uh, or it did serve a particular purpose while I was testing out redstone. And I've, I've been doing some experimentation with redstone, and I'll show you in this video, or in the next couple of videos. I'm not sure how long this is going to last. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll show you soon um, some of the experimentation and what I've learned with redstone ore. So anyway, this this floor, uh, this room, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it yet. It's just a wide open room. Give me some suggestions. Let me know what you think we should do in here, and uh, I'll, I'll take them into account. I still have no idea what this room is going to be for. On the other side of the room, this door exits out and leads you to the entrance to the X-Cave. That's a nice painting, isn't it? I'm sure you guys want to know how to make paintings, so let me show you here. Uh, you need one wool cloth, and I only happen to have two, so I guess that's good. And you're going to need eight sticks as well. So let's make some sticks. There you go, eight sticks. Alright, and in the crafting square, you just line the crafting area with your eight sticks, and you put one wool block in the middle, and ta-da, there's a painting. And here's how you set the painting. Let me find a good area. I guess this is as good as any. You select the painting, you right click, and it drops it on the on the wall. There are 19 different types of paintings that you can get. Um, and every time you place a painting, it's going to be random. If you don't like the one that you got, you can just hit it with your fist, or any tool, or anything. Just left click at one time, and it gives you the painting back. Then you right click again. Ooh, that's kind of cool. A skull. I might leave that one. But yeah, you can keep doing that until eventually you get a painting that you like. So yeah, we're going to leave that. So we got two guys fighting and a skull. The X cave is awesome. <laughs> All right. So um yeah, like I said, that room is actually part of a, a a bigger system or something something bigger than it. And if we come up this new stairway here, we'll see that we have a door that leads out to the roof of the X cave. And let's go ahead and go out. We'll brave the dangers of night for right now. The only way that uh, something can attack me up here is if it comes down from here. Pretty safe at this point. But yeah, um, I also took some comments into account, and I created a two-block-high wall along the perimeter of the export. There's the door where I would normally exit. You can see that from you can see that through the glass. And I was always worried about creepers or spiders jumping on me, but because of this two-block-high wall, they can't make it over, and they can't actually uh, deal any damage to me because they won't be able to get down. Now, um, if something's actually on this roof and I need to kill it, well, I have a way of dealing with that, too. Get a look at that thing. Yeah, it's not really a whole lot to look at. Um, most of the things that I've built, I've tried to keep aesthetically pleasing and well-designed, but I didn't build this particular object, this tower. I didn't build this for looks. I built this to serve a purpose. And it still does look kind of cool, I think, anyway. 
let me show you a little more about that. Close this door, make sure we're safe. On the other side of the tower, we have a door that leads out into this uh, open area, just behind the ramparts here. And let's see, nothing down there. That's good. This is this looks like a small wall, but if we come over here, okay, we seem safe, I suppose. That's some sheep. Yeah, we're good. But if you look over here, I really shouldn't be out here at night. I mean, that defeats the whole purpose of building this wall. But I just want to show you guys what this is all about. Anyway, yeah, we've got a too high wall out here, too. So enemies can't jump up and get into the area from either side. That wall extends all the way around the back. The only way up is through here. And most monsters aren't going to find that little area. And if they do, I know exactly. I I've got good range on them. But they're not going to get that close. Why are they not going to get that close? Well, let's go up to the second floor of the tower. Up the first stairwell, up the second stairwell. And here is the second floor of the tower. This is the lookout floor. We'll climb up here. And ooh, we can see a... Uh, is that a zombie or a skeleton? It's a skeleton because he's moving quick and jumping around. So we've got a skeleton out there. Way at the, way at the end. Oh, the sun's rising. Perfect for the lookout tower. And yeah, we've got all the animals. There's a zombie over there in the little forest area. Here comes the sun. Oh, that looks very cool. Just get a look at that. It's very nice. There's the X-Lite 9000. And if there were any baddies around, which fortunately for the video's sake, there aren't any at this particular point. Except for that skeleton who's approaching. Spiders have come out of that area. Monsters have jumped down from here and landed on top of my little uh, safe area here. So I built that wall so that they can't do that anymore. Now they can only drop down into uh, the danger zone where I can take them out from here. And from the top here, from the lookout floor, you don't really get a good view of the uh, of the roof of the export. So. The reason the first floor here, we'll go down one, flat, one, one level, the reason the first floor exists is because it has a much clearer shot on not only the things on the X roof, uh, on the uh, X fort's roof, but on anything that might happen by. Uh, anything down there, I have a much clearer shot on anything from here. Because I'm closer to them, and they still can't reach me. And I also have a chest up here. Right click on it, and there's some arrows just in case they come up. Just in case I come up here and I'm unprepared, I have those arrows ready for me. That way, I'm not going to be running out of ammo. And then we head back down into the tower. So, a very nice defensive structure that has actually served me well while I was building it and while I was testing out the redstone stuff. All right, so let's head back down and let me show you the biggest change that has occurred in the X system. We'll head back down to the hub because the biggest change has occurred in Mining Shaft 1. I have taken some comments from Mining Shaft 1 into account. You guys wanted me to make sure that there was glass uh, on all the floors so that the sunlight from the X-Lite 9000 could penetrate all the way down to the bottom floor and that's exactly what I've done. So here we have Mining Shaft 1, Operation Diamond, in its new state. I've closed off the top and sealed it with glass. Remember this was the this was the area that I was working in. This is as big as it got. It was 4 by 3. Well, I've extended it. Let's go down to the first floor here. This is MS1 Alpha, the first floor of Mining Shaft 1. Uh, MS1 Alpha, if you'll recall, we, well, you don't have to recall anything. You can see it plain as day. Um, we didn't find anything. Uh, but there are directions that we can dig in MS1 Alpha so that we can continue exploring. So. Whenever I need to do that, I'll build a station here. And here we have the second floor, MS1 Beta. And this is the place where we first found the uh, where we found the first cave, where I found a little bit of iron, a little bit of coal, and I didn't really explore too much into it. But ooh, some frame rate issues. But I do fully intend on exploring the rest of this area at some point. So MS1 Beta comes equipped with a station. This is a full-fledged station. This is beta station. Um, if you'll notice, uh, all of my stations follow the same format. There's always a chest to the left, a workbench right by it, and the furnaces are always off to my right, and there's always two of them. So that is how MS1 Beta's station is set up. That's how all my stations are set up. All right, so continuing down MS1, we come to MS1 Gamma, 
which is like alpha. Nothing here yet, but if we decide to do some more exploring, that would be a good tier to do it in. MS1 delta, like gamma and alpha, just potential. And here's MS1 epsilon. Epsilon is the second cave that we found where we encountered water and some magma. So this is also a cave system that I'd like to explore. We'll be getting into that soon. And uh, MS1 Epsilon. Ooh, I hear zombies. Actually, you know what? You hear that? I hear skeletons and zombies. A lot of them. So that means there's like, if I was to come in, come out here, and like, dig that way, or even if I, hmm, I don't know. We'll check it out at some point. But even if I were to dig through there, I'm pretty sure I'd get, I'd put myself in a lot of trouble. Anyway, this is MS1 Epsilon. It's probably going to be the most interesting floor, I think. Besides the very bottom, MS1 Zeta. You guys remember this place. And we've got daylight penetrating from the x 9000 through the glass, and this place is bright as day because of it. So we're at the bottom of the Earth right now. This is as far as we can go. And no, some of you said TNT could break the bedrock. There are different ways, there are different ways that this is referred to. Sometimes it's referred to as bedrock, sometimes it's referred to as uh, adminium, but, uh, uh, or indestructible rock. But either way, these things cannot be broken. They're the actual limit, the bottom of the game. So we're at the bottom of the world, way down here, and we still got light bright as day because of the x 9000 and because of all the glass. So this is the bottom floor, you guys remember this, where we have the lava here, or sorry, magma. It would be magma because it's under the earth, but uh, we've got the magma and we've got water right there. So that is the biggest change that I've made, and this took me quite a while. It, I went through so many stone picks, so many shovels, doing a lot of calculations to get the floors just right, and now we're headed back up because before I begin exploring I want to show you guys a little bit about the redstone dust and I'm not an expert on it by any means but well uh, there's gotta be a good place where I can show oh I know I've got an idea 